All right, what's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend. I'm excited for, I guess for a lot of you, it's the first week of the last month of the quarter. Other people, it's still, you know, on my Salesforce calendar, folks, it's still, you know, just another, just another month mid-quarter. It's kind of like, yeah, it's like the in-between month. That's like a little more relaxing. Uh, so, all right, let me get and pull up LinkedIn real quick so I can see everybody. Make sure to drop in as always. I got a lot of tabs open. I'm usually not the tabs guy where I have like 80 tabs open, but I feel like I have a ton of tabs open right now. All right, let me turn this down. There we go. Get in here, be the first to comment. All right, so what's going on, everyone? Hope you're having a great start to the week. Um, do me a favor, as usual, feel free to drop in where you're joining from. Um, I'm in Austin today. Um, and yeah, we're going to get this conversation started here. So today's topic, we are going to talk a little bit about um, this concept of customized sales journeys and how the future of B2B sales truly will be this concept of the company, you know, I, I, I firmly know and believe that the people that are going to win in 2024 and beyond are the people that provide experiences that are specific to a customer. And um, I know that that doesn't, that shouldn't sound like too insane. Um, I'm going to be doing two sessions on this. So this is session one. Um, and I'm going to talk about like um, optimizing your and ma how to map your customer journey. Um, and then two, we'll talk about how to map those things. Um, you know, it's interesting. There's a Gartner survey and give, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up, a clap or some, I can't see anybody in LinkedIn live. Gartner said this and tell me if this resonates with you. 77% of B2B buyers said their latest purchase was very or somewhat complex or difficult. Three out of four buyers said that buying purchasing, not their own internal bullshit, was difficult. And what should that tell every single person? All right, I got a little clap there. Another couple. Okay, good. All right. Um, what should this tell all of you? Well, what this should tell you is that whatever process you are executing right now, it is probably not as optimized or complex as, or it's probably overly complex. And if you're a sales rep, okay, and you're you're listening to this, you have the ability to think about this as well too, which is, hey, if I showed up on my first meeting, what would I want? What would I want the experience um, to be? Um, if you don't know, if you haven't watched the um, the four C's here, we'll talk about this. Um, there we go. Lots of people like that. Um, if you're like, Jake, what is a customized sales journey? I'll drop a couple links for you here. Um, these are just some previous posts you can go check out um, if you haven't had a chance to kind of dive into the four C's yet. Um, make sure that you do that um, because this one in particular, customized sales journey is where I spend a bunch of the time in the book. Um, make sure again, if you haven't pre-ordered the book, you can click the little link under my name that says visit website, or you can pre-order the book here. Um, we are announcing uh, March 26th. So if you are listening right now, March 26th, I want you to go and block your calendar from, I want to say one to five central. So January, or March, oh, January, March 26th, block your calendar one to five. If you have pre-ordered the book, it's only for people that have purchased Innovative Seller. We're going to have hundreds of people there. Um, I, I'm getting confirmations right now from sales leaders at like that are running massive teams. And then also a lot of influencers who are doing a lot of cool um, things. So this is the Innovative Seller Summit, March 26th. When you buy a copy of the book, I just dropped a link in there. Um, what you'll do is you'll go buy the book and then you come back and you just enter your information and we will automatically get you access to the summit. So if you have not pre-ordered the book, please pre-order. Um, we're at like, I don't know, five, 600, which is fucking awesome. Um, and you know, we're trying to get that number closer to like three or 4,000. So need, need all the help I can get from everyone. This is definitely a labor of love. So, uh, that's why we called it the innovative seller, right? Is that we're all trying to get better here, trying to innovate. All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, two specific pillars now within customized sales journey. Okay, um, the concept is not is not rocket science. 
that as a, an individual, just imagine your own purchasing experience as a B2C buyer, okay? How annoyed would you be if every checkout was cumbersome? You know, every checkout experience, like I said, Gartner said 77%, three out of four buyers said that the process is too complex. And the reason is we are not doing a good job of customizing the experience to the person. And by the way, we don't need to like overly customize everything. And I'll talk a little bit about what you need to do and what goes into it. So um, first two pillars I'm going to talk about. So again, if you're not, you know, if you haven't uh, started to read some of the content I'm putting out here, I'm going to talk about these two pillars uh, in particular. So the first one I'm going to talk about, um, as you read the book, um, you're going to see each principle, the four C's, each principle um, has three pillars to try to make it more actionable. Right. What I wanted to do is when I wrote the book is to make sure that every single thing, every chapter, that whether you are a rep or a leader, you could quickly be like, cool, I can go and execute this. So the first pillar I'm going to talk about here is this idea of how to build a customer journey for an ideal experience. Okay. Like I said before, buyers are telling you that the current process today is not ideal. Like that is what they are telling you um, as a part of this. So what does that mean for you, right? It means that we have to start to think through, um, you know, what those things look like and how we can create better experiences for people. Um, so what does this mean? How many of you, and maybe show of hands, and actually just in the comments here, if you've done this, um, how many of you have ever taken the time to just sit down and map your customer journey? Like for yourself, like, hey, like if I was gonna buy from me, how would I want to buy? So you can just put in the, you can just put a Y or an N, um, you know, and just kind of tell us, tell me if you've ever done it before. Again, like I said, I'm just kind of very curious if, you know, people have done it before or not done it before um, because it's a, you know, we can, uh, we can, uh, what do you call it? We can talk through some of that. Let's see. Uh, let's see. So far, nobody yet. So I'll wait like maybe a minute, a couple seconds here. Not too, not too crazy. I'm going to pull up some other things for us as well, too. All right. All right. So, all right. The next thing is what do we need to do to do this? Okay. And in the book, just so you know, if you, um, when you buy the book, you get access to the summit on March 26. You also get access to the innovative seller community. So we have resources in the community. So again, when you pre-order the book, um, you know, you've got that as a part of it. Um, and as a part of that, you also get access to um, AMAs and some other things that we're doing in there. And I'm just going to, I'm just copying and pasting in some things over here. I feel like, what is Jake doing right now? Uh, pulling this over. Okay. All right. So what does this mean to build a customer journey? Okay. Like what goes into this and why, and why should you care candidly? Like, especially if you're a rep, you're like, why should I care about this shit? Like, why should I care about this? I, I, and it's going to be because I'm going to tell you this right now. Companies are going to lose deals consistently because the experience is seller centric and not buyer centric. Okay. So as a part of that, like, what do I mean uh, as a part of that? So here's, I'm going to just talk through a couple of things um, on like what that means, how you can do it, et cetera. So the first thing, and again, we've got like a template that you can use. Um, the Innovative Seller Community, if you've pre-ordered the book already, you actually probably are getting an email this week to join the community. We have a template in there for how to do this customer journey map. Like I said, I would, I would really encourage all of you to go download that template and immediately like fill that out as a part of this. But think about it like this. It says, okay, if I was a customer, and I came into you and, and you can just map it, like, let's call it two ways to start. If I was a customer who came in and said, look, I already use your competition. I already know about pricing. Like we call those people vetted or educated, depending on how far along they are. What should my sales experience look like? Should I start at the beginning with a qualification call? Should I be ready to then jump ahead and like bring th two or three people from my team on the call? It's probably the latter. So when you go through this customer journey map, I want to think, okay, so what if someone comes to me 
they're, they already know about this. They talked to somebody in one of their like leadership Slack groups. That person, we should start at step three. So we want to build processes to fast track people who are further educated, right? Isn't that what you want as a consumer, right? When you're buying something, do you want to have to fill out the same questions for everything? Or it's like, look, dude, I already know what I want. Get me here. I'm ready to buy. Let's go, right? So that's that. Now you could do the same exercise. What do I do when someone does come in cold, right? Um, you know, how do I fix this? Um, how do I go ahead and, um, you know, as a part of this, how do I do a better job of, yeah, like making sure that I, um, just gonna insert this, making sure that I have a process for cold. Okay, so they come to us educated. With a lot of these steps, then we think about, so, okay, someone comes in hot, this is how we should maybe deal with them. Someone comes in cold or doesn't know a lot, this is our process for them. So it's not, it's not that they won't end up in that process, but we need to start them at a different level. Now, there's two more things I'm going to talk about that are important to this customer journey map. So step one, you know, step one here is what do I do with educated or vetted buyers versus cold? Okay, step two. Can I learn this information? Mation and help them with information gathering asynchronously. I'm just going to put async because I don't think I could actually spell asynchronously correct. What does this mean? Um, does your company have the ability for people that are cold to watch a demo before the first call? Do they have the ability to learn about how you compare to the competition that they're already using? Yes or no? People want to consume information ahead of time. You as a rep, here's one thing that you can do before every first call, just send an email. Hey, John, looking forward to our conversation on Thursday. Um, I talked to a lot of people on this first call. Sometimes they're very early stage of exploring. Other times they've already, you know, they're, they're using us or a comp, you know, somebody and they want to just kind of skip ahead and learn a little bit more detail. Where would you put yourself on the spectrum? That's it. Now I know coming into that first call, the type of experience that I can try to provide. I can customize that experience to the individual. The third step three in this, okay, is are they on the buyer, or I'm sorry, the end user or impact team? How should I adapt? Okay, so the next thing you need to think about. So I now know the how where this person is. Okay, great. They have some, some background. I'm going to start them at here in the process, okay? The next thing is, are, is this somebody from the group that's going to care about the tactical day-to-day -day and how it's used and how it's going to help their life? or someone who's going to care about the business impact. This is why this, the idea of like having one economic buyer or decision maker is, is archaic. Um, that today we have teams, that an end user team is going to have a group of people that is going to say, hey, are we going to use this thing or not? It's not one champion, one person. There's, there's 10 people that could say no, right? And again, if it's an end user, how might my first meeting be different? Oh, this is the director of digital marketing. She is probably going to care about these things versus this first meeting's with the CMO. The CMO is going to care about these things. So when I talk about building a customized sales journey and when you're doing this mapping, there aren't infinite variables. They're really just kind of these two ideas for you to think about. Number one, how educated, where are they on their education level? So I know where to start the conversation. And then number two, are they on the, the end user team, the people that are going to care about usage, utility, admin features, or are they on the business and impact team? Where somebody says, hey, we need a, we need a solution for this. Because again, how I'm going to show up for that first meeting, if it's with the VP of marketing, is I'm going to talk about business impact. I'm going to have case studies ready. I'm going to have these things. Whereas if it's the first call with the director of digital, I know she might have additional more tactical questions. So maybe I'm going to invite someone from the team who can do a proper demo. I like it. I saw some light bulbs go off there. That I love that. That's probably my favorite of these, uh, these uh, emojis here, if you call them that. Uh, they do look like they've cleaned them up a little. They look less like they're done with a fuzzy marker. Um, so that's what you got to think about. That's step one, okay? That's the first pillar, okay? And I'm going to talk to you now about the second pillar and how to talk about that. This one just really kind of builds on the sec on the last pillar there, um, which is uh, pillar two. Pillar two. Okay, here you go. This is, again, I wish that sales followed some weird 
linear process. Unfortunately, it just doesn't, but it is more predictable than you think. And that's what I'm going to help with right now. Okay. So now here's what you've done. You said, okay, I now have a customer journey that helps to meet people where they're at in my process. Great. Like I said, if you pre-ordered the book, you can download the template. It will be in there, um, but you can fill out. That'll take like five seconds. Here you go. We've had, you know, some people join since. Um, if you have not, make sure you pre-order the book. There's still time. No, there's plenty of time. Um, but yes, definitely pre-order. So then you get access to the community. It'll just save you a shit ton of time. It's free. The book's $32. So like, it's a pretty amazing resource with the summit and everything else. So what does this mean? Pillar two, strategies exist at each step to fast track or move. Okay, so I talked a lot about the first meeting that you have with someone. How are you showing up? Are you showing up? Do you understand where they're at? So you've got the right people and you understand the types of things that they want to see because you know that they're on the end user team or the impact ROI team. Great. Now, how do we work these teams through the process, right? And by the way, all the way through to renewal because renewal um, in the book, I think one of the most important concepts I talk about in the book is the sale, customized sales journey ends at power usage for your customer. The customized sales journey means that we are anchoring around what the customer cares about, which is power usage. The customer does not care about a signed contract. That is not the utility that they will get is your commission check. So what do I mean when I say strategies exist to fast track or move people back? This goes back to my point from before, okay, which is this. Let's say in my sales process, I know I've got an educated end user team. So that means my first call I show up, I'm prepared. I'm ready to talk about the product itself, what it can do, tease on the impact, et cetera. Let me ask you this, and I'll ask it rhetorical. If your first call is with an, edu an educated end user team, where do you think the, the impact in ROI team is? Well, they might still be back here at the cold phase. So the first meeting I have to have with them is here so I can get everybody moving. Once you get later in the deal, we get all sides moving then it becomes a lot easier here. So the way to think about this is a company doesn't move through your sales process. This is this will be another light bulb. And I'll just put this in here. It's like step one. Step one. Understand a company does not move through your sales process in a linear way. Groups or teams, as I call them, teams move at different paces and need to be met based on where that team is. Not all teams. Boom. This is a major concept for everyone to understand. Um, I have my first call. This is why this champion is such economic decision maker, like this does not exist, right? Because here, I now have the idea, my end user team, in this analogy, this end user team knows what the product is now. We've had our first call. The next step, and most of you in sales know, I need to then either have another conversation with this group to get them more excited and loop in more people, or set up a conversation with the impact and ROI team to get them caught up in the process. So in the same deal, and again, this is where leaders are, it's, it's a very short-sighted view when people do pipeline reviews right? Because the pipeline review is about where's this company. And usually people are going to tell you wherever the, the furthest person or team is ahead in the deal, where the reality is like, okay, great. So it sounds like we've got a really strong use case for how this is going to impact the user teams day to day. Where are we in the deal with being with having the right people and group and team to understand the business impact and ROI? Every deal has those two teams. Sometimes there's a lot of overlap between the teams, especially in small companies. But I want you all to, to really think about this, con this context. A company doesn't move through the process. Teams move through the process. So you could have one team that's here, one team that's here. So deal-wise, you know, and again, why I say people can move forward in the process based on their level of knowledge or backward, it's like, I really, the company is still at step too, because this team isn't on board yet, you know, and so they're going to need to learn more, et cetera. So I've got a lot of work to do to get the ROI and impact team. And so that's what that means. 
you know what I, you know, uh, when I think about how do you steal, how do you steal deals, right? Which is the point of this one. How do I steal deals for my competition? Is you do what I just told you. And now we're going to walk through a side-by-side -side comparison, okay? Company one runs your typical linear sales process. Doesn't matter how much you know ahead of time. Doesn't matter what role you're in. You start at the same place every time. The buyer shows up and then they're in that Gartner 77% where they're like, I got no value on the first call, All right? I showed up. I'm like, oh God, this is gross. Like they're not, they're not listening to me. I got some boilerplate, whatever. Now I've got to go try to schedule some AE who's going to ask me the exact same questions that this guy just asked me, right? Or maybe the AE was on the call, but now they're going to do like a blanket demo. Or the first call is somebody who, who asked ahead of time, where are you at in your process? They gave you options to learn about the product asynchronously. Again, whether it's more ROI focused or the, or the end user cases. And then the first call is like, great, here's what I know. It sounds like you're here. Based on that, here's our next step. And I'm ready to talk to you about things now. I'm ready to talk about pricing maybe on the first call. If you have already told me, like, I'm looking at your two competitors. I'm getting like, I know now how to meet you in your journey and in your process. Okay, so that's what I want you to think about is, you know, who is going to win more deals in 2024 and 2025? The company that is always aligning to where different groups are, the teams, the user team or the, the uh, impact and ROI team is always aligning to where they are and moving forward or backward based on the deal or the team that's putting everybody through the same spiced one size fits all linear process, right? That is the number one issue with methodologies today is they operate in a linear in sales environment, which hasn't existed in like five to 10 years. And so if you're operating a methodology that, that does not think about the customer experience and how people move through your journey to where it's custom, I get it. It's not, you don't have a million customizations here. We're talking about some very basic ones, which is where do people come in and how do we fast track, right? And then how do I make sure the teams all stay caught up? So if you're using one of these other methodologies, it's okay. But that's why whenever you get into the book, we've got a whole section in the community around intent, N-T-E-N-T, -E which is our acronym here for, again, how we think deals move through you know, the, the funnel here. We talk about the T, teams. We talk about education. We talk about numerical priority, not this pain or need you know, stuff. Pain or need, I could ask eight reps was, did, what that person said was a, a need. And eight reps would give me eight answers on it if it was a need, right? And then timeline to impact. When does the company need to see impact, right? So in some of these next ones, we're going to start to talk about intent a lot more to get you all familiar with it. But in the meantime, this is these are the first two pillars. In the next talk, I'm going to talk about the third pillar, okay? The third pillar in customized sales journey, there's another one, is never stop aligning to the client's priorities. We live in a world that as somebody goes through your journey, People leave jobs more often than ever. The economy is like rent, 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 and things change. And so it's an important mindset is that we are always aligning at each step of our journey on the priorities for the company. And we're assuming things have changed. So just a little teaser. We're going to talk about that and a little bit of intent next week. But in the meantime, if you pre-order the book, you can get access to the community. I don't know. Becca can, I don't know for sure. I, I know we're going to give people access this week. So some of these templates that you're asking for, et cetera, those will be in the community. Um, so that's what I got, everybody. Um, if you haven't registered, here's the link for the summit. So like I said, March 26th, you can register here. Um, if you've already pre-ordered the book, don't worry about it. You're already going to get one. Um, anything else interesting? Um, if you guys haven't seen some of the cool AI stuff we've been doing, I'll just drop a couple links for you here. Um, check out the AI stuff. Um, if you're somebody who's trying to get up to speed on chat GPT, sign up for the workshops first. Just FYI, don't jump to the custom GPTs. Um, but yeah, look, as a part of Innovative Seller, uh, it is my duty to make sure that we are staying at the forefront of sales. And so every Monday you come, you check in for a good little 30 minute uh, get to know. Uh, you join me and KD every other Wednesday for AI Unleashed. And then you join the, the community. And um, you know, my job is not to create another place for you to go. We don't need another Slack community but instead a place where you have resources about what does it take to be successful in sales going forward. So um, 
Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you. Have a great rest of your week. Um, I think, I'll, yeah, I'll be here next week. Um, we've got kids spring break, so uh, we might have to do a recorded session, but we'll see. Um, so again, if you have questions, you can always DM me. Again, pre-order the book. That's going to get you access to the summit, the community, everything I talked about. Um, and if you're interested in going deeper on AI, check a, take a look at some of this other stuff. So appreciate all of you. Now you know how to steal buyers from your competition. Have a great rest of your week, everybody.